Welcome in to the Hump Day, Wednesday, May the 12th, Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller, thank you for being with us. We've got, again, a lot to talk about today. So first of all, the moon will leave Taurus into Gemini, where all the action is right now. And that happens at 842 this morning. There is a very brief, like 20-minute void of course before that happens. So not much there to even get the void of course going. But the moon in Gemini is going to be interesting because that's where the moon wobble is. That's where Mercury is. That's where Venus is. And this yod that we talked about yesterday that we're going to continue to talk about today is as well. There is one exact aspect today that we should also talk about. Mercury is trining Saturn, 231 Eastern this afternoon. This one's kind of an interesting one because with Mercury, you have this bouncing all over the place. Think of Gemini, the twin, find Mercury. Which one are we talking about? Multiple ideas, lots of information streaming like you're really wanting to move stuff forward. But with this trine aspect to Saturn, it's like Saturn's structure is saying, come in and let's work on the details, too. With the trine, there's not a conflict, there's cooperation. So for the next couple of days, today and tomorrow, Thursday, you could basically look at how you could shore up some structures, capture the plan, but also capture the details, execute the plan, and spend an equal amount of time executing the details. You know, there's also a fierce independence in this aspect as well. So this is a time to make you shine. Gemini is very much about putting yourself out, and Aquarius is don't tell me what to do. Gemini, social. Aquarius, social, rules the 11th house. So reach out to groups of people with this too. Heavy aspect on that, reaching out to groups of people. Like, I need to launch my radio demo today. <laughs> I really do. Be a good day to produce it. Are you launching a digital course? Do you have a big social media following? Do you want to be a little bit more influential on social media today? Good day to do it. Mercury moves quickly, so it won't last long. Give it the next three days would be in that energy. So you've got a little bit of time, and you maybe that would help you refocus a couple of things. Let's go back to yesterday's question from Rhonda about the yod. Be good to go back and brush up on yesterday's episode if you didn't hear it, but here's kind of some broad information uh, about the yod. And I mentioned yesterday that I did a two-part episode on this back in August of 2020, August 18th. If you go back to that day on the history of the podcast, then uh, you can hear what we said back then. But Here's some different take on this a little bit. First of all, Steve Forrest addresses this in the Book of Air in Chapter 15, and there are quite a few write-ups online about it. There are a few books, not a lot. So you have these two planets that are the base, if you will, of the Yod, the witch's hat, the tall triangle. They are 60 degrees apart. And then you have the planet at the top. Now, the mystique of this, obviously, it's the 10th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's Yod in Hebrew. Yod is how it is generally pronounced in modern astrology. It does have this mystique about it for some reason, and it is just a chart pattern. So I'm not sure exactly why the mystery of it. Maybe it is that connection with the Hebrew alphabet, and maybe it is because it's called the finger of God. But basically... If you think about the two planets that are the sextile, the base, that top planet is the midpoint of the base. Now, what I did on this, I always like to review on the Yod because it is such a, an interesting formation. And I did some reading, and then I closed all the pages, and I put the book away, and I just sat down and reflected on what my thoughts were on it. So the cookie-cutter descriptions are around things like special mission, special destiny, a portal to something better through a special test. In the Book of Air, Steve said it's like God is pointing right at you <laughs> through this. And then, as he was saying, through the sparks, it's like marrying a detonator to dynamite. So there's this theme of this tension being built up and then resolving the tension 
and then around a karmic mission. For example, they say a lot of comedians have yods in their chart. So here's this tension, and the best way to deal with the tension is to make fun of it or laugh at it or create the paradox and see the silly side of the tension. Or that they have an extra brilliance around seeing that applicable funny side of life, if you will. Then we pointed out this particular yod that is still in the chart today. This is the last day of it officially by aspect because Mars will pull off and, and basically collapse that one quincunx leg. But here we are at the end of Ramadan, and now all of a sudden there's fighting erupting in the Middle East. Well, there's the whole paradox is right there sitting in this yod in the chart. So the south node being the familiarity, when there's tension and conflict in the Middle East, it is often resolved through fighting it out one way or another. That's the familiarity of the south node triggered by the conflict of Mars, that warrior conflict energy. And you remember when Mars ingressed into Cancer, we said on here that Mars was not so friendly and happy in Cancer? Cancer's too mellow. It's too emotional. It's too watery and buttery. Mars wants to fight. So there's that conflict triggered. And Uranus is on the other side of it. I mean, what a bizarre time to trigger this conflict than Ramadan. I mean, isn't Ramadan technically about peace? And yet, cloaked in this multi-millennia old conflict. And it's a tension around homeland. Where is home? What is cancer about? Home. Where is Mars? In cancer. Fight to defend the homeland or fight to gain the homeland. There really couldn't be a more perfect example right in front of us right now than this conflict of this yod. And then when you add the new moon from yesterday and we are creating new beginnings, I don't know where this goes. Maybe this amplified conflict continues for a while. Maybe this brings some things up that are going to be with us and are going to take some time to resolve. And maybe we're creating new tensions that will be there six months, a year, two years down the road. We'll see. It is under that creating moon. I will say that. All right. Hope that explains it, Rhonda. Thanks for a good question. Have a great rest of hump day, and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.